I've been active in ministry for about 12 years and was really, really active with Chad, who's my lead pastor, doing all the things that I, I really thought that a Christian should do. I grew up in a church and I grew up in a very um, strict religious home. Um, the God that I knew growing up, I, I could never live up to those standards. And so I turned away from God for many years. And um, that of course led to my addiction. Our families had, had completely given up on us. Um, We'd hurt him so much, um, and it got to the point where we just didn't have anywhere else to turn, and um, we were pretty hopeless. In fact, I, I got to a point where it was just I accepted complete defeat. So last year, um, I went with Love and Care Ministries around Christmas time to go um, give presents to the kids in apartment complexes. We were welcomed with open arms by um, people, people just like me, and by people that. Um, we're less fortunate that we're going to serve these kids and serve these families. During the summer in July, my friend and I, we went to Subway just to eat dinner and there was a lady in front of us who was covered in black dust um, from head to foot. She was having to just take everything out of her house that had burned. And she was doing it by herself because no one showed up to help. This lady leaves, she tells me her name, um, but I didn't really think anything of it. What I found is that I didn't really know what I believed. I ended up removing myself from preaching. Uh, I could not continue to tell people to live in a way that I myself was not living. I realized that I was hurt inside and that I had things going on inside of me that I had never dealt with. The thing that absolutely blew my mind was that everybody there wasn't wasn't there to receive the gifts. Their favorite thing was spending time with us. But as the day continued, I couldn't stop thinking about Betty Alvarez. I just couldn't continue without without actually doing something. We've just been loved for who we are. Nobody looks at our past and nobody um, judges us. At the mission, when I first got here, I felt very welcomed. I wasn't judged from who I was as an addict in recovery. In fact, because of that, I was embraced. One thing that Chad heard from God regarding my situation is he heard the Holy Spirit tell him, give me room to breathe. And it's interesting because I really felt like I was being suffocated. The thing that I'm most amazed about is that Chad uh, never gave up on me. So it feels really good to have God impact your life through one person. I, I remember just stepping back and seeing, like, this is, this is what God intends for for community. This is what God intends for, for giving. I encourage everybody that whenever you you give, don't don't give um, an empty present. Don't give um, money. Um, give your heart. Give your heart to people. Be vulnerable. Um, that next morning, Saturday morning, I actually went to her house to see if she, maybe she was there and needed some help. And I was like, Hey, Betty, do you remember me? And she just starts crying. We just absolutely demolish the house. We had to take everything out of it. Everything was covered in smoke and before they were able to rebuild, everything else had to be taken out and just remodeled. We contacted um, builders, people that were going to remodel, electricians, plumbers, everything that was needed in order to make this house um, livable again. We were able to actually get her moved back into the house that she has lived in for 50 plus years. And that's the thing about Christmas that that I have really learned in the past couple of years is it's not about um, who can spend the most money or who can get the most things or who can provide the most. It's, it's how much of your heart are you willing to give for those people in the name of Jesus Christ. So if you do feel a nudge from the Lord, I just 
I just pray that you will take that step of faith. If I hadn't been a part of the rebuilding of Miss Betty's house and just been a part of her life for these last two or three months, I wouldn't be where I am today. I encourage you all to, no matter what time of year it is, to, to just be listening for those opportunities to step out and help others. My name is Brian Lee Holloman. I'm 42 years old. Uh, currently, I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a business owner. And I uh, desire to bring inner healing to people. I'm Katie Stivers. I'm 21 years old and I go to Abilene Christian University. My name is Terry Osborne and I am the Associate Recovery Pastor here at the Mission and I'm also a Chemical Dependency Counselor at Serenity House. I'm Carrie Osborne and I'm Terry's wife and a member of the Mission Abilene. My name is Sadie Dickinson. I'm 20 years old and I'm a student at Abilene Christian University.